Hello, I'm Mark Fulton from markfulton.org. Thank you for opening up this video about why Christianity was born. I hope you've enjoyed my previous two discussions about Jesus and St. Paul. Christianity. Well, the first point I'd like everyone to appreciate is that Christianity only really started to surface in the Roman Empire after the First Jewish War, which was in the years 66 to 70. This was a very big war, and the Jewish nation and the very religion of Judaism was decimated. What happened was that the Jews eventually managed to capture Jerusalem and expel the Romans from Jerusalem. A number of wannabe messiahs led armies of men in there and got rid of the Romans. Unfortunately for the Jews, they fought amongst themselves, though. Now, of course, Rome didn't sit by and twiddle its thumbs when its authority was undermined like this. So the Roman general Vespasian uh, marched 50,000 uh, soldiers into Palestine. They soon routed Galilee and burned villages and, and killed anyone resisting them and took many prisoners and made their way down to Jerusalem. They, in, in the year 70, they surrounded Jerusalem and uh, there was no escape possible. They cut down all the trees around the city and sat there and waited. In the meantime, the warring factions of Jews inside the city's walls burnt each other's food supplies and fought amongst each other as to who was in charge. All the Romans had to do was sit there and watch and wait. After a few months, the Romans made their move and ransacked the city. The Jews were so weak, there was virtually no resistance, and there was a massive slaughter. The temple, which was the centrepiece of Judaism, was totally razed to the ground. Now, by this time, Titus, Vespasian's son, was in charge, and he didn't actually have to destroy the temple. But I think the Romans had had enough of Jewish zealotry causing trouble throughout the empire. This war was actually only the culmination of a number of smaller uprisings that had happened in the previous few decades. Jesus, in fact, had tried to himself to start one of these uprisings, but was very unsuccessful. So the Romans razed Jerusalem to the ground. Um, they killed a total of one million Jews in this war, and they took another 100,000 prisoner, prisoners. They marched them back to Rome and sold them off as slaves or used them in the Colosseum um, for spectator sport. Now, this was a disaster for the Jews and for the Jewish religion. Although the Romans celebrated back in Rome, they actually took little joy in this either. Um, as I said, they were thoroughly sick to death of 
Jewish wannabe messiahs starting insurrections against the government. It didn't set a good precedent throughout the empire. It threatened the trade routes with Egypt because Palestine was on the trade route with Egypt and the Roman city was quite dependent on Egyptian grain for food. Now, here's something that took me at least five years to realise. I think that the Romans realised they could use other ways to suppress the Jews. I think they created Christianity as a plot to undermine Judaism. Now, the reason the Jews continually revolted was they read their ancient scriptures and in them they read about the story of a Messiah, someone who would lead them in a revolt against anyone who was oppressing them. This Messiah was to put an end to all the injustice in the world. He was to establish the Jews at the top of the world's pecking order. And from there, the Jews thought they could spread the story of their God, Yahweh, into the entire world. The Jews wanted to be what the Romans actually were, the rulers of the world. So there were many, many wannabe messiahs in the years throughout the first century. And the, Jew uh, the Roman government was thoroughly sick of them. Now, the Roman government were very, very good at what they did. They were clever. They, I believe, created the propaganda that the Jewish Messiah had already been and gone. He wasn't a political Messiah. He was a spiritual Messiah. Hence, blessed are the peacemakers. Turn the other cheek and love your enemy. They then created the myth that Jesus was a celibate. They didn't want anyone from Jesus' bloodline thinking they were a new legitimate Messiah and starting another revolt. If this was true, there were many Pauls throughout the Roman Empire spreading propaganda and it also meant that the Roman government had a big hand in writing the definitive versions of the Gospels. We must remember that it was the winners in those days that wrote the history. It is fascinating to realise that every one of us today has been subjected to propaganda that is nearly 2,000 years old, and some of us still believe it. Throughout history, Christian propaganda has been the source of profound misery, and it still is. Think of the burning of books and the burning of heretics, the Crusades, the Inquisition, the wars between Protestants and Catholics, and the Holocaust. Our children today are still getting their heads filled with hymns, prayers, Bible study. I think it's time to put an end to it. We no longer need to be the victims of propaganda. We don't need untruthful stories about God's beliefs and creeds to have a meaningful life. We need to let these things go. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed my talk.